on the plains of Arafat, standing proud beside my brother, silent at Mustafa. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala Rasulihi al-Karim. Amma ba'd. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I welcome all of you with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we have had the great fortune of having with us scholars of Islam, experts, da'is and students of knowledge all across the globe to come and share with us the wonderful and the beautiful teachings of Islam and its various facets and also to help us as Muslims, individuals as well as communities to overcome the challenges that which we face in the present day scenario. In the past episodes, we have been discussing on a very important and a very interesting series on the topic, the virtues of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Alhamdulillah, we covered many aspects related to the month of Dhul Hijjah and primarily amongst them was the pillar of Hajj. What is the nature of Hajj and what are the various virtues of it? Today, we will be discussing the main topic that is the month of Dhul Hijjah. And to begin with, we would request our Shaykh for this series, Shaykh Haytham Al Haddad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Shaykh, as I had mentioned it earlier, we have discussed a lot about the pillar of Hajj and its various virtues. Today, our audiences would like to know that how do we begin this month of Dhul Hijjah? Or for that matter, how is an Islamic month determined? Whether it be the month of Dhul Hijjah, Ramadan, Muharram. So what is the procedure to be followed and what is the wisdom behind it? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. You are touching on a very controversial subject. And it is a, <laughs> it is a matter of discussions between scholars all over the world between people from different backgrounds in different countries and it is a valid question it is a very important question in fact which is how to decide the beginning of the hijjah we are talking about the virtues of the first 10 days of the hijjah so want to know that this is the beginning of the hijjah this is the question and obviously the hijjah is maybe Although the original principle is the same for Dhul Hijjah and Ramadan, we will discuss this, but because Dhul Hijjah is linked to the activities of Al Hajj which are performed in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca, in Saudi Arabia. So there is a difference between. Now, obviously, there is Arafah in Saudi Arabia and there is Arafah somewhere else. If. So, what is the ruling regarding this? And your point that how do we decide the Shar'i month in general? These are very important points. Let me explain this as follows. First of all, the Prophet wasallam said about the start of Ramadan. Don't fast until you see the new moon. Don't cease fasting or stop fasting until you see the new moon. Yeah? If it is cloudy, then complete the count of Sha'ban, which is the month before Ramadan, 30 days. Now the scholars took from this hadith, which came in different narrations, that the lunar month is decided according to the Qamar, the moon. And that's why they are called the lunar months. And the year, based on this, is the lunar year unlike what the other westerners follow the gregorian calendar or the solar calendar yes follows the course of the sun and the rotation of the earth yes yeah okay so we follow the moon rather than the sun so we are the ummah that follows the lunar calendar not the solar calendar as you said or the gregorian calendar by the way, unfortunately, many Muslims have abandoned the Hijri calendar, which is the lunar calendar. Although Allah Jalla says in the Quran, "Inna idda tashhuri 'inda Allahi tna'ashara shahran, 
يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم ذلك الدين القيم and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said as zaman means the time returned as Allah جل وعلا created it in the beginning and he recited this ayah that the count in the sight of Allah جل وعلا that the timing yes of the year is 12 months or is based on 12 months four of those months are sacred months what are the sacred months dhul qihda dhul hijja and muharram and then the fourth one is rajab the month of rajab the month of rajab those are sacred months and that's why al hajj one of the virtues of al hajj that it happens in the sacred month which is dhul hijja now how to decide the beginning of any of the lunar months as we said it is based on the new moon citing the new moon as the prophet وسلم, said in the hadith and the scholars took from the hadith that we're talking about ramadan and the starting from ramadan as a general rule to start all lunar months and they said that based on those hadith we have the main criteria which is what which is citing the new moon if we are unable to cite the new moon then we complete the count of the previous month 30 days after 30 days of the previous month we start the new month okay okay this is the criteria and now do we go for calculation or observatory calculation it is almost the consensus of the previous scholars that we don't go for the observatory calculations we don't go for that some scholars said that it was the opinion of uh, Mutarrif, one of the Tabi'een and uh, Subki even if it is their opinion it doesn't negate the fact that the overwhelming majority of scholars go for what or citing the new moon or completing the count of Shaban and they don't accept the calculations now we have to understand one point that this is not because Islam is against science as many seculars now are trying to present it no but Islam has another criteria of looking at things and there is no contradiction between science and Islam not at all the established scientific yes. facts yes in general Islam has a very positive attitude towards science Mashallah. but in certain cases Islam says that this is a shari matter rather than a scientific matter so Islam says the calculation which is a scientific method of calculating the month is respected etc etc but it is not the criteria to decide the beginning of the month why because it is not mentioned in any of the hadith some scholars now they start saying that well at that time the ummah were ignorant of the scientific methods of calculating the new moon and that's why the prophet sallallahu said we are an ummah that ummah ummiya illiterate no this is a wrong understanding this is a wrong understanding who said this in the past in fact there were many scholars who know when the new moon will be born and they knew the calculation they can achieve that okay in fact this 18 degrees and many other astronomical calculations can be traced back to the third hijra century and there is no indication that the prophet sallallahu made the matter flexible because the prophet sallallahu said sumu li ru'yatihi fast if you cite the new moon so he linked it to what citing to citing yeah while the prayer timing is not linked to citing and it is very important to mention this because those who say that islam is against science no islam approved using scientific methods for what knowing the prayer timing islam has no problem with that but for the new moon it is different so it is the different rule is applied 
Allah Jalla wa ala says in the Quran, Aqim salata li duluk al-shamsi ila ghasaq al-layli wa Quran al-fajri inna Quran al-fajri kana mashhuda Establish the salah li duluk al-shams when the sun moves from the zenith yeah? ila ghasaq al-layl to the beginning of the night. night so Allah Jalla wa ala says Aqim salata li duluk al-shamsi when the duluk, when the sun moves he didn't say when you sight it and that's why the scholar said if you can acknowledge when the sun moves, if you can acknowledge the prayer timings by any scientific method, that will be accepted. But that is a unique situation that does not apply on what? On the issue of the new month. They are two different scenarios. Many brothers and sisters don't understand this. They don't understand the difference. And that should be highlighted. Okay. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We are getting into a very interesting discussion about how to determine the month of Zul Hijjah and the other lunar months in the year of Islam. Inshallah, we'll continue discussing on this, but after a short break. Crying out to the heavens on the, on the plains of Arafat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after a short break. We were discussing about how to determine the month of Zul Hijjah and Sheikh you were telling us about that the sighting of the moon is associated with the physical sighting of it whereas the prayers can be determined by using the scientific means yes for example the prayer timing we want to check when do we pray Dhuhr we have seen in the calendar that Dhuhr starts at 12.30 for example so now it is 12.30, it is time for Dhuhr. We don't need to go outside to look at the sun and the sun moved or not. And subhanallah, this is very practical because the start of the month happens once a month. But the prayers, we pray five times a day. It is impossible for each person that he stops his prayer until he goes outside and see. It is impossible. Let alone that there will be clouds, there will be many other astronomical barriers. And imagine if the person, if it is cloudy, like in London, where I came from, most of the days are cloudy. So it means that I will not see the beginning of the Fajr, the end of the time of Fajr. I will not see the sunrise, I will not see the sunset, which means that I don't pray unless I see them. So that is not practical. And this, as we said, confirms that Islam is not against science. As many, unfortunately, many Muslim writers, many Arabic writers now, they say that, oh, look, Islam is against science, and still we have a problem of calculating the start of the month. No, we don't have a problem with this. We had the problem after people like you started to interfere into a shari matter. Okay, so we have fixed this ruling. We have established this ruling. The beginning of the new lunar month is decided according to what? To two criteria. The first one is moon sighting and the second one is what? But if completing you can, 30 days. 30 days. Of the previous completing month. Completing the count of the previous month, 30 days. Finish, clear. However, is this the responsibility of the individuals of the Muslims? Or the entire community? Or the entire community. Okay, what does that mean? If, for example, as the scholar said, that the moon was sighted by a few people, and then they went to the imam, the imam of the community, the leader of the Muslim, the khalifa, if there is a khalifa, and they told him that we sighted the moon, the imam or the khalifa or the leader accepted their testimony and said, because you sighted the new moon, Tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan. Okay? Now, me as an individual living in that country, am I required to go and sight the new moon by myself? Or am I obliged to check who sighted the new moon? Or I will follow the decision of the leader? Which one? What do you think? Brother so we have Kareem. three options, so I think the last one was 
the more relevant one because it helps in maintaining the unity of the people. Not only that, but is it possible for all individuals to go for, of to course. Look for the individuals? Because it is more feasible more? and more logical that which we follow yeah. the last option, yeah. that is to follow is the it, leader. Is it feasible for the individuals to go themselves to sight of the moon or to... No. It will become very difficult. And there is no difficulty in the religion. Subhanallah, Islam is a very practical way of life. So once the leader announces that tomorrow is the beginning of Ramadan, the rest of the people will follow. Mashallah. Subhanallah, this is, although it is common sense, this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. There is a hadith that is always neglected. Although it is criteria number one, even before sighting the new moon. What is the hadith? The Prophet ﷺ said, Hadith Abi Hurairah, in At-Tirmidhi, most of the scholars believe that it is an authentic hadith. The hadith says, As-sawmu yawma tasumun. The start of the fast is when you all fast. Yes? Wal-fitru yawma tuftirun. And you stop fasting or you cease fasting end of the month when you all stop fasting. Wal-abha yawma tudahun. And the day of sacrifice, which is the day of Eid Al-Abha, Eid Al-Had, is when you all do this. At Tirmidhi, a scholar who recorded this hadith, he said after that, وَالْعَمَلُ عَلَى هَذَا عِنْدَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ And the people of knowledge acted upon this. That the beginning of Ramadan is when all Muslims, or most of them, fast. fast. And they end fasting when most of them end fasting. And the Hajj, when all of them go for Hajj. What does that mean? It means that if I come to a country like India, most Muslims will start Ramadan tomorrow. Yes, I'm not convinced that it starts tomorrow. But now I am in India, I should follow them. The scholar said, if there is no leader, then the vast majority of Muslims, when they go for one opinion, as if they have followed one leader. So you go for that. It is itself an evidence. That itself an evidence. Okay? So this is the criteria. The criteria is, whenever you go to a country, now because obviously we don't have a unity among the Muslim Muslims all over the world, unfortunately, okay? Until that happens, what to do? If you go to a country, and in that country it was decided, either it was decided by the leader of Muslims in that country, or it was decided by the vast majority of Muslims there, that tomorrow is the beginning of Ramadan, then I should accept that and act upon that, that tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan. MashaAllah. Done. Same thing with the end of Ramadan. Same thing for Al-Hajj. So, this means that the best scenario is if the Muslims are united and they decide when to start Al-Hajj. If they decide when to start Al-Hajj, then this is the beginning of the month of Dhul-Hijjah. If they want to be united according to the Saudi authorities, because now they are in charge of Al-Hajj, that is the best scenario. So this will establish also the unity of the Ummah. But, if they are divided, like the situation now, if you go to Saudi Arabia, you follow Saudi Arabia and the Hajj decided by them, okay? Even if you start your Dhil Hijjah in your country in a different day. For example, imagine, imagine that in India it was decided that the first day of Dhil Hijjah is tomorrow. Tomorrow is what is Tuesday. Okay? Tuesday. So Tuesday is the first day of Dhil Hijjah here in India. So which means that next Tuesday is what? Next Tuesday is the 8th. Eight. The Arafah is what? Wednesday. Will be Wednesday. And the Eid will be Thursday. Thursday. We went to Saudi Arabia. 
after we started here, we traveled the third day of the Hijjah to Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, they said, no, we sighted the moon earlier. Uh, one day so, prior or two days prior? Yes, one day earlier. So the first day of the Hijjah is Monday, not a Tuesday, Monday. Which means that the Arafah will be what? Tuesday and then not Wednesday. And the Eid will be on Wednesday. And the Eid will be on Wednesday. While in India, where I came from, Eid will be Thursday. And Arafah will be what? Arafah will be? On Wednesday. On Wednesday. So for me, now I am in Saudi Arabia. Should I perform my own Arafah? So people will go for Arafah on Wednesday and I will go to Arafah by myself on Tuesday? It will be wrong on my part. <laughs> no, that is wrong. Absolutely wrong. And this is nonsense. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ said. And mainly it is controlled by Mecca if you are in Mecca. Very good. MashaAllah. It is clear. Now, still some people might not accept this. They say if the authorities in Saudi Arabia decided on the beginning of the Hijjah, then we should follow them. So they decided that the beginning of the Hijjah Monday, we should follow Monday. We say no problem. If the vast majority of Muslims in your country or in your city in some circumstances, yeah, decided to follow Saudi Arabia, then follow it. Not because it is Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh, be careful. It is not because it is Saudi Arabia or Mecca. No, because those people in your country, the Muslims in your country, are acting upon what? On the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu fast when you all fast. So here, when you all cease fasting, and your sacrifice is when you all do your sacrifice. So in my country here, in India, they decided that the Eid will be on Thursday. The Eid is the day of sacrifice. So then my Eid, while I am here, is Thursday. But my Eid, when I go to Saudi Arabia, will be what? Will be Wednesday. That's correct. If some people differ on this, then we need to know what to do. Jazakallahu khairan, Sheikh. I hope the audiences must have clarified much of their doubts from today's episode, the Sheikh has Alhamdulillah given a detailed explanation about how do we determine the beginning of the month of Dhul Hijjah as well as the other months of Islam related to especially the months that which has some form of worship like the fasting of the month of Ramadan and the Hajj in the month of Dhul Hijjah. Inshallah, we have many more questions related to the same subject of how to determine the beginning and the ending of the months in Islam, which we will inshallah be doing it in the following episodes. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All across ocean and land, incumbent on all men, is the pilgrimage to Mecca, fifth pillar of Islam, in the footsteps of Muhammad, the last prophet of Allah. Bow down, bow down and praise Allah. First side, first side of the Kaaba. Break down. Break down. Break